good day class so for today i'm going to give you the last uh, fifth module for our course and this is about the elevator pitch now, this is usually the way in which we introduce a product we introduce our very own skills and abilities to would be uh, employers or any idea under the sun which we think is innovative or something that is new or novel so an elevator pitch is something that uh, we can use as a tool or as a means of getting our information across a specified audience. Now, as for the learning objectives of this module, so we are to determine the importance of the elevator pitch and evaluate the very important components or elements of a perfect elevator pitch. Now, I have here an example of an elevator pitch on how to sell your ability. So you all would be graduating a few months from now. You'll be reviewing for your board exam and after which you're going to look for a would-be employer. So it's like selling your capabilities, your skills, your talents to a prospect employer. So this is not going to take long, but in it, so in this particular small page, your, your idea or your uh, shall I say, the way you sell your capacity will get through your uh, would-be employer. So please take that to listen. A 30-second elevator pitch, sometimes called your 30-second commercial, is a quick way to introduce yourself at a career fair, when networking, or in any professional setting. Start off with a quick intro. Your name, year in school, and major. Easy, right? Next, mention your plans for the future. What field are you interested in? Let the other person know your goals. Then, talk about the steps you've taken to get there. Briefly describe your experience or skills that you've developed to help you reach your career goal. Finally, if you're talking to an employer, mention how their company fits into your career plan. And there you have it, 30 second elevator pitch. Create one and you'll be able to approach employers with confidence. So, what's your pitch? Okay, so that is just but an example of how you're going to sell yourself, your not yourself, but your skills, your talents, your capabilities to your employer. So it's a very short way of getting across a person's interest or stir up a person's uh, enthusiasm or interest on something that you'd like to offer him or his company. Okay, so that's uh, an example actually of selling, but what you're selling is your service, is your contribution, your innate capability and skills to the company of your would-be employer so you're offering what you alone can offer that company that no other uh, shall i say applicant can give to that company so it's up for your employer to really decide whether you'll be hired or not so that is a uh, liking to a pitch in this case an elevator pitch because it takes the time of riding an elevator for the particular pitch to be finished. So what is a, an elevator pitch? So it has been partly discussed in the video. So it's a brief. So 30 seconds would do for some, but at the most it can be as lengthy as two minutes. Uh, you can have yourself introduced. You can have your key point or two uh, spoken to that particular person and you can make a connection to that person so to that uh, shall I say would be customers in this case it's called an elevator pitch because it takes roughly the amount of time you spend riding an elevator with someone and that particular time would be enough for that someone to be interested in what you are saying and what you are offering so what are the five step elevator pitch that turns strangers into clients, would be clients? So you have to first introduce yourself or sometimes it could be you can start with identifying the problem or the current scenario. Then with that, you can introduce yourself. Then you can announce your promise. So based on the problem identified, what is the solution? What's your take on that particular problem? 
what are you offering to give a solution to that particular problem. Now, it's not just you're going to offer something as a solution to the problem, but you have to give proof or uh, to show a plan on how you're going to carry out your agenda, your objective of giving a solution to that particular problem. Now, it's very important that you're just simply not going to be so engrossed in the time frame that you have to finish what you're going to say, but it's very important that you also watch the body language of your listener. So you can, uh, you should be able to detect whether the listener is still interested in what you're saying or you are simply gobbling up your words that he doesn't understand or your message doesn't get across the listeners. It's very important that you do that. So take note, these five steps does not have to come in any chronological order, but your perfect elevator pitch should have these particular elements. That way, uh, your idea for a particular uh, problem, for a particular scenario, something that will be better than the existing, that you are offering as a solution will spark an interest in your client. Okay, so these are the five step elevator pitch. So as to the learning objective, as to what are these essential components, so there has to be a stimulation, a stimulant to the interest. When you think of your pitch, there has to be a word, there has to be a phrase that right away you'd know, you would know that your listener would be interested in. Then once you get to see in the body language that he's already interested or she's already interested, or let's say the board is already interested, then you transition that interest into what you are offering. What you are offering to the company, what service are you offering to the company, what product are you offering to the company. Then you share your vision, you share your solution, which is of course in a form of a vision to that particular as to that particular solution that you are offering. Now you, you are going to transition from just simply a, a something that delivers a speech, but someone who uh, uh, is trying to not only sell something, but is going to uh, make the audience agree that your vision could, could be something that could be shared between you, your company, and their company. And in, in if this particular scenario uh, gets across to them, then both of you win. You win and the company also wins. So it's a win-win situation for both of you, the seller and the customer, or the one that's making the speech and the would-be client. So these are just the final tips. I know there would be a lot of examples that you, had, that you can hold up to as to final tips on how you're going to make your pitch interesting and how you're going to make your pitch something that would just, something that would just simply not pass through the hearing of your audience, but something that would really be imprinted in their mind. So when you talk, so I have mentioned a while ago, you don't gobble up your words. You don't get so concerned about the time that you're going to finish your pitch. So take your time. As much as possible, make it conversational. Not that you're going to speak like a robot or a parrot. That uh, as long as you deliver what you have to say, then uh, it's like you're, so, you're just a distant speaker to somebody who's listening to you. So make it conversational. It's uh, the main purpose is for you to make a connection to the one that is listening to you. And very important, you have to express confidence. For a person to be interested in what you're saying, number one requirement is that you have to be confident enough that what you are offering is really the best thing that they should be able to receive or something that they're going to try. If not receive, something that they will try. Avoid. So we are engineers. We have technical terms that are only known to us. So avoid niche words and phrases. As much as possible, we want to get our idea across our client in layman terms. Then later on, probably you can use technical words, but make sure that you make those words or phrases easy to understand. So you explain it as much as possible to the level of understanding. Not that you're going to use highfalutin words, phrases that they can even understand what you're talking about. So these are your final tips. Now I have here example of an elevator pitch which won first place in a contest in uh, US on students 
to uh, as far as I have requirement in their class should give out an elevator pitch about anything that they think will be resaleable. Okay, so I'd like you to listen to this. So for this one, there's really a big impact for this particular guy who's offering a solution for those who have food allergies. So listen to what he's going to say. By the time I'm done speaking, at least one person in the U.S. will join 500,000 others that go to the hospital every year because of an allergic reaction to food. I have been one of the 500,000. I'm Brian Ciro, and it was one of the scariest experiences of my life. What happens now when I walk into a restaurant is I say, hi, I'm Brian. I have an egg allergy. And the restaurant responds, well, we're not particularly sure whether or not you can eat our food. Too often, the information just isn't readily available. So what I'm working on currently is an app called Allergy X, where it takes every restaurant menu from every major chain in the country, puts it on one app, and you put, I'm allergic to eggs, I'm allergic to gluten, I'm allergic to soy. Those things you can't eat disappear from the menu and highlights only things that are safe for you to eat. The beauty of this is that all of this information already exists. Corporate headquarters have it, suppliers have it. It's just not in a format that can be used. So why not put it in an app, put it in your pocket, and carry it with you everywhere? Thank you. So very interesting, right? If you are a person which has allergies easily, you can go to a particular online uh, website for a particular uh, fast food chain or a well-known store and you can easily uh, put in there the ingredients to food or dishes that you are allergic on. And all those things that are in the menu that have those ingredients will be taken out of you. So you will just have to choose on the remaining dishes. So what is good about this app is that uh, you can carry it anywhere with you, just like what the speaker is saying. So you need not bring with you uh, any pamphlet or any flyer that tells you about foods that have the allergens that you are allergic to. Okay? Now that's something for those who are suffering with food allergies. Now, for this one, this is very, 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 very nice. I find this, uh, this is the only time that I have came across this idea, but this is really very brilliant, a brilliant way of advertising. Just like when they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, this thing is being used right now even in the political campaign. And uh, the store owners is using this particular uh, way of getting his uh, candidate uh, to would be, let's say, voters is very easy. Now, please listen to this. My name is Josh Light, and I'm the CEO of CupAd. And we believe that we have the most effective form of advertising available in the market today. Our advertisements are exposed to customers for 2,220 seconds on average. Now, what kind of advertising has that kind of exposure time? Ladies and gentlemen, we advertise on copy cups. That's right. We put your brand in their hand. So how does Coffee Cup advertising work? Well, we got an advertiser. They pay us money. We produce paper coffee cups with their advertisement or brand on it. Then we give these coffee cups to coffee stands for free. Now, why does someone want to advertise on a coffee cup? Because it takes an individual 37 minutes to drink a cup of coffee on average. That person's going to have to look at the cup, drink, look at the cup, drink 20 times before it's fully consumed. And that person's going to move around like a mobile billboard, exposing that brand to at least six different individuals before that cup is drank. Why does cup, what's in it for cup ad? We make 13 cents of profit on every single cup that we distribute. And what's in it for the coffee stands? Well, when most people think about coffee stands, they think about Starbucks. But what about the 25,000 coffee stands in this nation that have plain white cups like this? They don't, they don't have the economies to scale to put their own brand on the cup. So we give them free cups. They save $15,000 a year by not buying cups. They like these savings so much, ladies and gentlemen, that approximately 80% of the stands that we've con contacted have signed exclusivity agreements to distribute our cups. What kind of momentum have we started for this company? The last month alone, we got 58 coffee stands in California to sign exclusivity agreements with us to distribute our cups. If we continue to get 58 coffee stands every single month for the next 12 months, we will have 700 coffee stands at the end of the year. With 700 coffee stands, we can move 8 million cups a month. And at 13 cent profit, 8 million cups a month, we're making over a million dollars of profit every single month. And we've already started this, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, our first customer, Overstock.com, will see their cups hit the California market in 21 days. Thank you very much. So, 
So that's paper cup advertising. So it's a win-win situation just like what we shared a few moments ago. You win, you earn, and your customer also saves money. And you get your idea. Isn't it a brilliant idea? So in your coffee cups, uh, in the especially in here in the Philippines, we're in, uh, there are a lot of coffee drinkers. So you get your message across to a person that drinks coffee. Or you can even extend it to those who are uh, selling sagot kulaman but doesn't have, uh, let's say, the, the money, the, let's say, the additional uh, cent to spent for a very nice coffee cup so what a particular advertising company could do is that offer as a as a fee cup or gulaman cup or whatever it is to so those uh, sagu gulaman tenders so they get to save money you get your idea across to people so it, it depends really actually on the audience or on the clients or the customer segments that you are going to target so if you want the coffee drinker so you can use the coffee cup as an advertiser if you want the the tea the tea drinkers then you can have the tea drinkers cup especially for those sellers who doesn't have their own brand so they are those uh, small medium enterprise that doesn't have uh the money to spend additional cent to spend for a very nice cup whatever that may be so this one idea is very brilliant so i'm sure right now you have a lot of ideas already going through your mind as to what would be your elevator pitch for the product that you have already uh, thought of in your business plan so this is one way of uh, sparking the interest of your listener or getting your idea across advertising using an, a pitch now this one is for really, for us really CHE so we can have our, and I think the, those that have, can relate to this have a little background on ionic liquids. Please listen to this thing. Next up we have Jill Harlan from UD College of Arts and Sciences. What do you think when I say the word innovation? Maybe light bulbs, heating, computers, or even Fitbits come to mind. What do you think when I say innovations of the future? Hoverboards, teleportation? Well, actually, the answer is ionic liquids. According to a poll in the UK, ionic liquids are voted the number one innovation to shape the 21st century. Ionic liquids are salts, just like the table salt you sprinkle on your popcorn. But instead of being solid, they're liquid, and this gives them an insurmountable number of applications. Have you ever walked down the street and seen that black gook that was once chewing gum now forever ingrained in the sidewalk? <laughs> Ionic liquids can easily remove that. Have you ever heard the high-pitched beeping of the fire alarm telling you it's time to change the batteries and wishing that batteries lasted longer? Ionic liquids are being studied to increase battery life. Have you read or heard in the news about the importance of capturing greenhouse gases in order to save our planet? Well, that's where my research comes in. I study ionic liquids for carbon dioxide capture. Right now, what's currently being used is toxic and corrosive. Ionic liquids could be the superhero of gas capture. They can capture more carbon dioxide and be less harmful than what's currently being used. Can you taste the future? If my research successfully reveals an ionic liquid that can efficiently capture carbon dioxide, then they could fulfill their potentials as innovations of the future and they could improve our world. Thank you. So speaking of innovation, speaking of technopreneurship, so that's, this is really the example. So ionic liquids is being now offered as a solution to global warming because it captures greenhouse gases. So, however, the one who shared uh, her uh, research is still in the process of finishing the research. And if it's successful, according to her, so he's already telling uh, what he is doing. Uh, is giving proof already that she's doing something and what he, she plans to do further that way he she can offer a solution to an existing problem and that's global warming due to co2 gas in the atmosphere so the increase of the amount of co2 gas in the atmosphere so these are just examples of elevator pitch so it could be something that you could use for 
uh, get hired. It could be something that you could use for advertising. And it could be something that you could use really for selling something so that a particular product could have a solution. So I hope this uh, particular examples and uh, uh, small uh, definition, the elements that were discussed regarding the elevator pitch should be able to guide you to craft your own uh, pitch. So it should not be more than two minutes. Uh, in the last particular example, the lady is there just given 90 seconds to finish. So that's around one minute and a half to get their ideas across. Okay. So I hope this uh, set of slides will be able to guide you in making your own perfect pitch for your own idea. Bye for now, class.